All right, thank you for joining me once again. If this is your first time, welcome. Going to do another update on the NS Detroit district that I am building in Trains 2019. So I'm going to do this in two parts. The first part here, I'm just going to kind of go over uh, what I have done since the last time I posted a video because it's been a while. Um, and maybe talk about some other things as we... Uh, uh, as we progress with this so I'm gonna s quickly go over to Detroit but I didn't want to dwell on Detroit because we did cover that a lot in the last video but uh, this is what we're looking at right now I have been trying to work out so that I can have a skyline but I don't really want it the thing is is I'm not really trying to uh, I'm not really trying to put too much detail in the back because this is kind of like an, a background scene and I, I'm not really sure if I really want to dedicate all the time to you know laying down every little fire hydrant and all that but uh, this is what I have so far and uh, of course this will probably progress a lot more as I uh, continue building but you know starting with the the boat yard which was kind of supposed to look like it's starting to run be run down a little bit which is just like in uh, the prototype uh, the boatyard is pretty much uh, obsolete at this point, and uh, especially, uh, well, in 1999, 2000, that time period, the the yard was probably being used to store cars, and it was it's still there. It's just not uh, not really a, a core uh, like a, a key asset to Norfolk Southern. So, um, if you don't know the uh, Detroit district was the uh, was the Wabash Railway and the Wabash uh, you know it was known for being one of the few railroads that would bypass Chicago uh, to connect to the west it would run all the way to uh, Kansas City from Detroit and uh, now it did connect to Chicago but it, Chicago wasn't its focal point mainly it was moving freight out west between the west and uh, Detroit which was a, a much bigger uh, economy a much bigger market in the uh, during the Industrial Revolution so uh, I don't know if you can see my cursor because I've changed it a couple times and I don't remember if I had it on or off but uh, anyways the tracks that you see spurring off to the left side here that was the line that would go to the Fort Street Union Depot. That would have been like milepost zero for the Wabash. And it would actually share with uh, Pier Marquette. There's a CSX yard over here that hasn't been built yet. Uh, as I continue towards the, the west here, this was all joint trackage with CSX. And it was called the Detroit Union Belt. I will touch on real quick, I've been changing the roads that I was using uh, in the last video, I talked about the uh, the AAS HTO roads that I've uh, I changed to, and uh, I was experimenting right here with just uh, using road lines and all that. And I just I don't know if that's something that I'm going to continue with or not. Probably not. Uh, this is the Delray connecting right here. That's actually a steel mill railroad uh, short line that served uh, U.S. Steel over on Zug Island and for that I'm going to have this connection and then I don't think there'll be anything further past that just the connection track there uh, just enough to interchange a coke train or some steel cars I'm not really too familiar I know coke trains would be delivered here but uh, as far as what other traffic was delivered I'm not too quite sure uh, the Detroit produce terminal right here and then the uh, intermodal yard that we covered la in the last video there, the reserve yard. Um, I haven't done much with Delray, so I'm going to skip right over Delray in this video, as, as well as the bridge, because I think we've already covered the bridge too. Um, for this particular area, I've been working on just how it should look, and this is still very bare at this point. Um, we've got some more... Uh, okay, so... I do want to talk about the uh, tri-level dock. Uh, Detroit, one of the last auto factories in Detroit, 
in uh, Dearborn is the uh, Rouge plant, and it's a very big facility. If you ever look it up on Google Maps, you'll see it's it's quite large. The um, Rouge plant builds the Ford F-150 and the Mustang. So I've got the Ford F-150 laid out here. That would be something that would be loaded at this location. So that's uh, just kind of a, a point towards accuracy, and I've got the auto ramps laid out now. Um, again, just kind of, you know, laying stuff out, seeing how it looks, and then going back later on and changing it out as, you know, time goes on. Uh, Oakwood Yard, uh, again, still trying to figure out what this section of the yard was used for. Not really too sure just yet. I know this was the uh, Triple Crown facility, and I say it like in past tense, but it still is, even though Triple Crown is, uh, has been abolished on most of NS routes. The uh, engine servicing facility, which wasn't too spectacular, uh, featured it does feature a two-stall roundhouse, just as the prototype, and this actually fits pretty well. And then right past the uh, engine servicing facility, there we go. We've got the, um, as far as I know, this is the uh, on-duty location for NS Crews. We're going to cross over. Um, I have put these roads in and built the wall on the other side there just to kind of give it some, uh, give it a level. This is kind of a, this is kind of a complex process right there. And then we've got the uh, manifest yard here. From what I can, what I can gather is that trains arrive into the yard that's on the left side and are switched and sorted out in the yard that's on the right side. And then, uh, so I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to dwell on, oh, I did get, okay. I will just touch on this. I did find some Conrail patched NS engines right here, or should I reverse that? It's an NS engine. Uh, how, how, how should I say this? It's a NS locomotive that has been patched on, oh, whatever, not important. You know what I'm saying. So that would have been something that had been very common in the late 90s, early 2000s, when Conrail equipment was still in its blue color, but just patched over with an, either a white or a black number board. And that's something that was very memorable to me as a child, because uh, uh, growing up along this line, I can recall seeing, uh, well, NS engines, and it was just, you know, back in the late 90s it was still kind of uncommon to see foreign power so you'd see you know tons of NS engines and and I liked the NS but I, I, I grew to appreciate it more later on um, but then you know starting in the late 90s you started or in early 2000s you started seeing the Conrail blue and that piqued my interest and um, I really liked Conrail I still really like Conrail but uh, and that's just, just kind of a, I don't know if it's a nostalgic thing or, or what, but I'm going to speed up now because I wanted to get over to the airport. I've been doing a little work here. So um, there is like a, uh, a county road commission. Uh, this is their, their storage yard right here. So I got that put together over on this side. Obviously, it's the Detroit Metro Airport. And, um, you know, the if you live in the Detroit metro area or you know anything about it you know that in the early 2000s Northwest Airlines this was their one of their hubs and this is obviously uh, something I really wanted to you know make sure was there and, and I was very happy to find those on the uh, the download station so uh, the signaling on this route again I am modeling it prior to the safe trans signal installation the uh, that is going to be uh, so it was basically the uh, pre before the bi-directional signaling was placed and installed and the safe tread and signals replaced the searchlight signals uh, it was kind of a combination of searchlight Wabash signals and then uh, later on NS signals that would come along after that so now that's what we got going on now uh, because it was directional running, the track on the right side was for westbound traffic, and the track on the left side was for eastbound traffic, uh, as far as your relative to what you're looking at right now. And the uh, 
the purpose essentially was if, or the, the rule was essentially is if you could run a train in any direction. However, in order to run a train in the opposing direction, you had to do a track warrant to protect the train movement. So uh, I'm modeling it in that era because that was all the way up until even CP rail trackage rights started. That was how that looked. So Romulus is kind of a hot spot to, uh, to interchange with CSS or not, not interchange. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm I'm starting to just talk and not really know what I'm saying anymore. Uh, Romulus is a crossing of the uh, the CSX line. That's their Saginaw subs. That this is CSX's uh, primary main line into the uh, Detroit area right there. Uh, okay, so and continue on uh, the other searchlight signal right here. They were placed kind of far back from the uh, actual crossing, uh, much further away than the new uh, safe trans signals are. Um, let's see. This would be. Uh, yeah, I won't talk about that too much. I do want to talk about. Uh, I do want to talk about the trees though, so. I was using CL trees, which were kind of a billboard tree, a really flat surface. And I've switched now to PG trees, as you can see here. And, uh, and if for reference that this right here, this shrub is a billboard style. It's flat and just kind of like that. From this angle, it looks great or it looks fine. But from up here, you can definitely tell I've been switching over to these and I was kind of concerned in the beginning because I wasn't sure if that was going to affect frame rates or not. But as of right now, it doesn't seem to be uh, hurting anything. So, uh, some straightening out. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm trying to get things straightened out the best I can. But you can definitely tell the track is not as straight as it could be. Uh, intermediate signals. I'm I'm having a lot of trouble with signals right now, and main, my main trouble is is that. Uh, Locations where a signal should display a uh, clear signal or like a, a signal that would signify a straight route uh, is giving me like a diverging route, a diverging clear, uh, and I'm getting like on a mainline stretch where I'm not uh, diverging at any point. Uh, it's giving me approach diverging signals and whatnot, and it's just uh, it's becoming a. I don't know if it's I, if it's because I built the wrong way or if I need to do something different or if it's just a, something that I can't control but I am definitely uh, I'd be interested to find out how to fix that um, this is coming into Belleville so uh, Belleville is kind of like the borderline between the the urban Detroit metro area and then the the rural uh, farm southeast Michigan countryside that's on the west end of the line uh, which is one of the cool things about this route is that it's very much a mix of both you get you get half of it is in the city half of it's in the uh, country um, the uh, searchlight signal was not accurate to this area but I'm, I still don't really have a this would have actually been a uh, an NS uh, safe trans signal and that was because uh, this section of line went from uh, a double track to single track and so that but when that happened they at that point were already part of Norfolk Southern and so Norfolk Southern would install their signals instead of the older Wabash style signals uh, and then for uh, control points where there's going to be a motorized switch I've got the propane tank switch heaters and uh, obviously a relay box to get that signal changed out eventually been working on some of the crossings programming them that's a uh, that's becoming kind of a uh, it, it's it's a lengthy process however it is definitely uh, much easier than in the past so uh, last time you saw Belvo's things were just kind of laid out sporadically but I finally found a place for stuff and started to, to lay things out especially as I've downloaded more assets like I've got the uh, the high school over here with the school buses in the yard and then the school itself in a football field uh, running along the sweeping curve right here and I think this is definitely gonna come out it's gonna look really nice 
Uh, once you get past Belleville, the roads just kind of become, some of them are dirt, some of them are paved. Uh, some of the crossings along the line are just cross bucks. And it's just kind of a, after this, it's just kind of a grid pattern of roads. It's just, you know, everything's laid out in a grid. And so that's what we've got here. Uh, and this area is also a lot more compressed than uh, the, uh, well, it, I mean, it's just more compressed. It's, again, I, I think I've explained before, but uh, the, my, my uh, thinking, my logic on building a route in trains, and it's one of the great things about trains, is that it does not have to be to scale, and it could be whatever you want it to be, and something that I really like and I do not particularly enjoy going uh, how you say uh, I don't particularly uh, like to spend two hours running a train over the main line uh, I did test this and you'll see this in, a, in the upcoming video that posts after this video that I actually uh, it takes about 40 to 50 minutes to run a train the entire length between Montpelier and Detroit. And uh, that's not even counting the boat yard. That's just going to Oakwood Yard. Yeah, we're still on the single track section here. Uh, coming down to Whitaker. And I guess I should name that Whitaker since I'm here. This is Whitaker. Whitaker, where the double track opens up again, and this is the, uh, you're coming into the Milan area, which had a few industries, not anything, not, no major industries, but there was an interchange with the uh, short line Ann Arbor Railroad here, um, and this also is a good time to, so you got US 23 right here. And then uh, the city of Milan right there. Um, you can see the lake in the background there. And then, of course, the Ann Arbor Railroad, which crosses on a bridge, kind of over, over a little bit of a causeway going that way. So I've got that in there, too. Uh, just kind of going over here a little bit more. Uh, there's a crossover, controlled crossover here to allow NS trains to connect onto the Ann Arbor Railroad. And that was important because... Uh, the Norfolk Southern, well, uh, the backstory, Ann Arbor Railroad was owned by the Wabash. And the Wabash and divested of that uh, through a, I'm sure it's more complex than that, but essentially uh, sold it to the Detroit, Toledo, and Ironton. And when that occurred, the, uh, I guess they must have maintained trackage rights or held on to trackage rights because and as trains can uh, still run between Toledo over the Ann Arbor to uh, to Milan and then connect to the Wabash to go to Detroit, which was important, especially after the Norfolk and Western merger, because uh, Bellevue Yard, which was a big major classification yard in uh, Ohio, uh, those trains could be, they could bring trains up from there. Trains from the east could come up. And instead of doing the roundabout way through Fort Wayne, could just make the shortcut through Toledo and then head over there. And I think train 196 did that. As well as I think uh, Coke trains would also come up that way. But uh, regardless, uh, this is a good spot to talk about the other big change that I made. So, in the previous video I had a different type of track that I had and I've now changed all of that to this type of track so I was using a 2009 uh, trains 2009 style track and I've now ex changed that all to a track uh, that came stocked with uh, trains 2019 which was uh, it's called UA UA tracks I'll pull it up right now that's not it here we go that's the track UA track wooden number seven is what I'm using and what I really like about this is that I can I can lift the track up above the ground and you don't see underneath it because it's got a much thicker ballast uh, that kind of uh, comes up on it's, it's a much thicker taller uh, 
uh, piece of track. So what I can then do is I can go along the track and I can raise it above the ground with it still touching the ground. And it looks like it's uh, the track is elevated and uh, you know tamped and regulated like it should be for drainage and it looks much more realistic. So I really like that and I also like the fact that when I do that, I can also take that track and uh, make it where the siding is lower than the main line, just like you'd see in real life. So uh, that's another change that has been made. All right, so I'm going to speed up now because we're coming to an area where I don't really have I don't really have anything. I got some basic scenery down, but nothing real major. I, I kind of just would stop. I would kind of lay things out. And sometimes I got kind of, I, I would get into an area and I wanted to just play around a little bit. And, you know, you get those times where you just, you want to stop building. You want to just kind of focus on one little spot just to see what you would do for the rest of it. And that's kind of what I was doing here. Uh, I think this is... Uh, this is where it kind of just becomes this bare land. This is Britain. It's a small village outside of Milan, between Milan and Adrian. And then and then we just come to nothingness right here. This is just a long stretch of track all the way through Adrian, which I have not even started on. Uh, Adrian's a tiny bit more. Uh, it's a bigger town. Got a lot more scenery to put in than Milan. But uh, as far as business and uh, work on the railroad is concerned, there's not much. But this is a good spot that I can show you what I was talking about as far as lowering the track level and sidings. So if uh, you have your, let me scroll back out. So this is your main line, main one and main two. And then this right here, the, what you would do is you would go into your advanced settings under tracks and you can get a vertex height. So you can either set a vertex height or you can uh, find one that's already uh, exists and you just click on it if you have it on this setting here get vertex site click on the uh, spline and it'll tell you what you have there's point th or point three five which is just enough to raise that track up and let's say I want to lower the track in here so that's point three five right now right here this is still point three five but if I want to change that to point one zero let oh, no point one zero I can then click apply vertex height and then I can start to set the vertex heights which you'll see how that looks in just a second so now you see that we go from the main line height and then it the track slowly dips down don't ignore that uh, the track slowly dips down to a lower level like so and then you've got this and this is something that's really going to uh, it doesn't look right hold on did I apply it to here I did and there and there is the is everything level right, is everything level in here everything's level Well, we'll have to work on that. That's not the purpose of this video right now, not to work on anything, just to give you guys an update. So, uh, continuing on through Milan, uh, that's also, or, uh, Adrian, and that's also an interchange with the Adrian and Blissfield Railroad. Um, I can kind of scroll out while we're here, just to kind of give you an idea of just how big this map is. Uh, drop that for a second. So uh, Detroit on your right side, going to the left, which is west towards Montpelier, Ohio, the entire length of the uh, Detroit district, and then it becomes the Huntington district after Montpelier. And this stretches obviously not to scale and scale down, which I think is going to add to it's going to keep the things interesting because you're not you're not spending so much time going from place to place. You can kind of get more enjoyment out of it as far as running trains and, uh, you know, trying to, you know, maybe move multiple trains or just 
You know, even if you just want to sit in one train and ride it all the way, you're not dedicating two hours to doing that. So, coming to Stan, and then we move on further west to West Morency. This is the uh, West Morency sidings, or I'm sorry, it's called North Morency. That's West and North Morency. That is what the timetable says. Uh, we've got Wilbur Ellis out here coming into. Uh, basically, the, the the west, far west end of the line, Alberton, I believe, is we're now in the state of Ohio. Alberton siding there. Let me just continue on. Um, and we've got the uh, basically coming into this would be what the Wabash refer to as like the Kunkel area. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what. Uh, what exactly Kunkel had uh, claimed to, but uh, anyway, continuing on to Montpelier. Um, I was able to look at some pictures of this control point, so I've kind of was able to get an idea of just what it was going to look like in, uh, in the prototype, and so I was able to kind of match it. There were uh, a three head, uh, there was a three head searchlight signal here at mode, and the relay box here was uh, like a, a stone brick uh, concrete style so uh, I try to match that the best I could and then over here obviously searchlight signals for this side as well and then uh, we're going to continue on into Montpelier yard Montpelier it was a big yard back in the day because the line that goes off this way towards that elevator that was the main line to Toledo so you had the main lines from, this is all Wabash, by the way, the main line from Detroit, the main line from Toledo coming together. And then if you continued to the west, I'm just going to skip over Montpelier for a second. If you continue to the west, you had your main line to Chicago and your main line to Kansas City. So this was a very important location for the Wabash. But uh, after the, Wa the Norfolk and Western lease of the Wabash, this section uh, essentially became obsolete because the nickel plate main to uh, Chicago became the primary. It's a short line railroad that connects through here now. The short line is the Indiana and Northeastern and they operate through Montpelier interchange with the Norfolk Southern and then they take that old line that ran to Chicago right here at Pergo. So that being said this is what I have so far and I will be back very soon with another update. Uh, um, I think that I don't want to dwell on this area too much because it's not really done just yet. So uh, I think that'll cover it. And I will put out another video uh, where I take a train over the line just so we can get an idea of how long it takes to go from point A to point B. So that'll be the next video, and uh, thank you for watching. Bye.